Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield. You can't see my face, but you can see what I'm doing. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to warp up this new 3D printed loom that I built. It is pretty straightforward. If you've ever done any kind of rigid heddle loom weaving or any other kind of loom weaving, I measured out my warp using a warping board, or rather, a, one of my inkle looms. I just measured it out to five yards or so, and I chain stitched it together to keep it from getting tangled up while I was transporting it to Wisconsin and back. I didn't end up doing the project there because, well, I didn't have the tools I needed on hand. So brought it all back home, and now I'm doing it at my very distressed dining room table. As you can see, I've already anchored the border cards down. Um, I just tied those onto the far rod. I'm separating out the warp for the middle cards and tying them on in small bundles. Uh, there were too many threads to tie on all at once, so I grouped them together in, I don't know, I think there's four, six threads together in each bundle. You may find that you want to tie them off in pairs or in fours, whatever feels comfortable to you. Of course, be sure to tie them on using your surgeon's knot so that the threads don't pull out. Once you have all your warp ends tied onto your warp bead, you'll need to get a big stack of paper. Pretty much any kind of paper will do, as long as it's got some stiffness, like uh, printer paper or old resume paper, which is what I used. It was all crinkled around the edges. You'll want to fold it in half to give it a little extra rigidity, and then Put the paper into the warp as you wind it onto the warp beams. Wrapping them around without the paper in place will cause the layers of thread to intermingle and then your tension will get all messed up. Trust me. So using one hand, pull the yarns tight, and with the other, stick the paper in and roll the paper and the threads around the warp beams. As I mentioned, I did five yards of warp and I was easily able to wrap that around the warp beams. I could have probably added another couple of yards before the paper got too thick. You will notice that some of my warp threads are a little twisted in my left hand and you will need to comb those out as you warp them onto the warping bar. Alright, let's speed this up a little bit. Just keep adding the paper, create tension, and turn the warp beam until you run out of warp.
And as I got to the very end of this, I ran out of resume paper, so I had to grab the nearest piece of paper, which was just something that was inserted into a mailer, I think. This is a personal project for myself, so I chose the Hallstatt 152. It requires 14 cards, and these are 3D printed cards that I got from Rowanberry Jam on Etsy. The cards came unlabeled, so there's no A, B, C, D. You'll have to do that yourself. So if you prefer clockwise or counterclockwise, you can set it up how you like it. So thread each card and then anchor those to the cloth bead. I found it easiest to tie two cards together around the cloth beam, except for the border cards because there's four threads. I tied each of those independently. And because I have the ratchets on the wrong ends, the forward is on the back and the back is on the forward, I have to turn it the opposite direction than what feels natural in order for it to tighten up around the cloth beam. The holes in these cards are too small for a pencil, so I'm trying a wood skewer instead. It was also much too small for the holes. With my tablet weaving card order, I got a cute little shuttle from Rowanberry Jam. It holds quite a lot of thread.
I started getting the weft thread anchored, but I didn't have the cards in the correct position, so now I'm kind of turning the cards forwards and back into the correct position before starting the weave. I did have to fiddle with the tension a little bit. The paper that I wrapped inside the warp had to compact down just a little bit. And then I was also having some difficulty with the back pawl on the ratchet. It kept slipping out of place. I've been weaving away on this little loom for the last couple of days, kind of trying to get to know each other a little bit. And after doing so, I've come up with a few things that I will probably change. Maybe when I get done with this piece. Or maybe I'll remove it and fix it before I get done with this piece. So a couple of the things that I'm going to change, besides the fact that this piece and this back piece are in the wrong places. I would reverse those. I might also omit this piece, this whole piece right here. It's kind of in the way um, I keep scratching my arms on these corner bits. My first thought was to sand them down a little bit, but I'm thinking now that I could probably just omit them. The other thing I think I would change is replacing these two poles and putting in just one pole that goes between, which of course means I could replace these three whole bracket pieces and just put in a single, just for simplification's sake. I don't need the two on there. I understand the original design made it so that you could anchor to one and then it would wrap around the other and you wouldn't have to have a more complicated anchoring system, but I'm not sure I like the design as much. So. Those are the things I would change. And I did get a slightly thicker piece of wood to put into the holes because that little skewer just wasn't large enough. Um, but even this is a little bit too small. And we are right on the flight path. 
Oh, cool. Oh, I don't know if you can see them. Right out there, just below... There's a couple of parachuters out there. Now, there's an airport just down the hill from us. And every once in a while, people go and jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Hmm. Not my thing. Okay. So, back to this. But uh, otherwise, it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, I'm, the tension is going okay. Um, once I got this all tightened up, because it was a really loose with the paper, I just had to compress down a little bit. But now it seems to work really nicely. And as you untwist, you just pull the piece of paper out and set it aside and save it for the next project. So, overall, yeah, this is a good loan.